This is the first lecture dealing with chapter 26 in Miguel Roig Francoli's book, Harmony in Context. Chapter 26 takes up the topic of modulation to distantly related keys. And it gives us uh, basically two different techniques to affect modulation to distantly related keys. Later on, we'll see that there are others. But the first technique that it gives us is using a pivot chord, but using a pivot chord, which is a chromatic chord in one or both keys. This is in contrast to the idea of a diatonic pivot chord, which we encountered earlier. The second technique that the chapter introduces us to is the idea of interpreting a chord enharmonically. So while it's written in a particular way in the musical score, it may behave as if it's a chord with a different enharmonic spelling. So the three lectures that I give on chapter 26 will take up these topics in turn. First of all, let's take a look at the sample modulations that I've written up on the board. I've taken the key of F major, and I've shown a possible pivot chord to take us to either the key of E major or the key of C minor. You can verify for yourself that these keys are distantly related to F major. F major has one flat in the key signature, and E major has four sharps. C minor is not so distantly related to F major. C minor has three flats in the key signature, but we still consider it to be not closely related. To modulate from F major to E major, so we're modulating from a, a key that has one flat to a key that has four sharps, very distantly related. I picked a chord which is diatonic in F major, but it's equivalent in E major, because E major is a key that has a lot of sharps, its equivalent has to be a mode mixture chord in E major. In other words, we're going to use mode mixture to take away some of these sharps and substitute naturals. The four chord in E major, which is an A minor triad, is a chord that is A, C natural, and E. So it doesn't have a C sharp in it. That takes us closer to the key of F major. And in fact, the A minor triad does exist as a diatonic chord in F major. Basically, the idea is that as we add sharps going to the new key, we have to compensate for that in the new key by using mode mixture and using lowered notes. The opposite happens as we modulate from F major to C minor. Uh, here we're going from a key that has one flat to a key that has three flats. So I picked a chord that's diatonic in F major, and this chord exists in C minor, but it exists as a secondary dominant. Secondary dominant chords are typically chords that we add sharps to or take away flats from. And when you think of it, in order to make a 5-7 of 4 chord in C minor, I guess it would actually be a 5-7 of minor 4, we would be raising the third of the C minor triad, changing an E flat to an E natural. So what we're doing here is we're adding flats. And as a result, we need to go towards a secondary chord, which includes chromatically raised notes. Miguel Roy Francoli has a name for both of these modulations. He calls these diatonic chromatic modulations. The chord that we pick as the pivot chord is diatonic in the first key, and it's chromatic in the second key. And by chromatic, I mean either that it's off on the flat side, being a mode mixture chord, or that it's off on the sharp side, being a uh, secondary chord of some sort. There are two more examples on the right end of the board. And these illustrate chromatic diatonic modulations. In other words, the pivot chord is going to be a chromatic chord in the first key and a diatonic chord in the second key. E minor is a chord with one sharp, and B flat major is a chord with two flats. 
if we want to have a chord which is diatonic in B flat major, a key that has flats in it, we're going to have to move to the flat side of E minor, meaning that we're going to have to use a mode mixture chord in E minor. Oh, whoops, that's not really going to work. A mode mixture chord won't involve uh, lowering a scale degree because we're in minor. But one chord that we can consider using is the flat two chord. The flat two chord takes the note F sharp and lowers it to become F natural. And that F major chord does have a role in B flat major. It's the five chord. In other words, as we go to a key where we are adding flats, we need to start with a mode mixture or flat two chord, something off to the flat side so that we can be using chromatically lowered notes in the first key that will match up with the notes in this more flat key. On the other hand, consider the case of a modulation from E minor to F sharp major. This would be a modulation from a key that has one sharp to a key that has six sharps. In this case, we want to start with a chord that's more on the sharp side. And when you think about the five of five chord, that's a chord which we have to add a lot of sharps to. Well, not a lot of sharps, but more than one. Normally, the two chord is an F sharp diminished chord, F sharp A C. And to make a five of five chord, we have to add an A sharp and also add a C sharp. So we're moving pretty radically in the sharp direction. And that's good because we're modulating to a key, which is pretty radically in the sharp direction. As we are adding sharps, we need to start with a secondary chord, one which is going to have chromatically raised notes. So remember that a diatonic chromatic pivot chord and a chromatic diatonic pivot chord are just what they sound like. The chord is diatonic in the first key, chromatic in the second key, or the chord is chromatic in the first key and diatonic in the second key. Now let's consider two other modulations. Here I have a modulation from C sharp major to A major. We're going from a key that has seven sharps to a key that has three sharps. In other words, we're going from the way sharp side to the less sharp side, or we're moving in the direction of fewer sharps and more flats. In this case, I have a secondary leading tone chord in each key. So this is what we would call a chromatic chromatic pivot chord. It's chromatic in the first key and it's chromatic in the second key. Let me just point out that if you look at the chord that's being tonicized by this secondary leading tone chord, in the key of C sharp major, as in any key, the four chord is kind of off on the flat side. Think of the role of F major in the key of C major. F major is the only chord that we find in C major which lies on the circle of fifths in a counterclockwise direction to the tonic. All the other chords, the five chord, the two chord, the three chord, etc., those are all in a clockwise direction. So four in any key, major four, is a flat side key. And six in a key is a much more sharp side key. As we're going from a key that has a lot of sharps to a key that has fewer sharps, we want to start out kind of on the flat side and move over towards the sharp side. In other words, we are, again, really thinking about moving in a way that will allow us to add raised notes in this key that has fewer sharps. Okay, over here on the other side of the board is another modulation. And this is a modulation from a key that has one sharp to a key that has four flats. So it's a fairly radical modulation. And in order to get from the key that is on the sharp side of the circle of fifths to a key that's pretty far on the, pretty far on the flat side of the circle of fifths, we need to start with a chromatic chord that's 
on the lower note side. So we're using a mode mixture chord here because the mode mixture is moving us away from G major and more towards the key of G minor, which is a flat key. In the key of A flat major, we're using a secondary chord, and that secondary chord is going to involve raised notes. The seven diminished of two will have to have a raised scale degree one in it. So as we chromatically raise notes in a key with four flats, and we chromatically lower notes in a key with one sharp, we can come up with a chord that's shared between the two keys. Now, if you're writing your own modulation, remember that there's more to it than simply finding the right pivot chord, although finding the right pivot chord is a part of it. If we wanted to modulate from G major to A flat major using this particular pivot chord, we would have to start with chords that establish the key of G major and then chords that lead to the two diminished chord. Then after the pivot chord, we would need to move to the dominant of a flat major and cadence, probably with a perfect authentic cadence. And we would need to remember all those flats that we would have to add. I'd like to turn next to the handout that I gave you in class. It's on Canvas as the as a handout on chapter 26. But what it says on the top is tips for chromatic pivot chords, or maybe tips on chromatic pivot chords. This shows you a little chart that is helpful in suggesting pivot chords if for chromatic modulations, although it won't really give you the answer. Block 5 represents the dead center, meaning that it has chords that are not to the flat side or the sharp side. It has a tonic major triad, and then it has the relative minor key right there, the sixth chord that represents relative minor. Also, it has the dominant seventh chord and the seven diminished seven chord, each of which lead to tonic. So these chords are kind of right there in the middle, not leaning either towards the flat side or to the sharp side. As we move to the left, we get secondary chords that are increasingly to the sharp side. So we move a perfect fifth away from one to five. We move a perfect fifth away from six to three. And we also have the chords that tonicize the five chord. From there, we run out of diatonic chords, but we can still have secondary dominant and secondary leading tone chords that tonicize two, that tonicize six, and finally way over here that tonicize three. Now let's see what happens if we move in the direction of the flat side, going the other way of this on the circle of fifths, that is moving counterclockwise, the one chord moves to the four chord, the six chord moves to the two chord, which is the relative of the four chord. And we can also have the secondary dominant and secondary leading tone chords that tonicize four. A perfect fifth below four is flat seven, and a perfect fifth below flat seven is flat three. And that can include its chord that tonicizes it. And we, we typically wouldn't find a seven diminished of flat three, but we might find that chord, and it would be a mode mixture two chord either a two diminished chord or a two half diminished seventh chord. We could also find the relative minor of flat three, which is minor one, another mode mixture chord. Continuing on, descending by fifth, the minor one descends to minor four, the flat three descends to flat six, and we also have the chords that tonicize flat six. And finally, the flat six can go even farther in the flat direction, a fifth down, perfect fifth down to the flat two, and that gives us not only the flat two, but also the five seven of flat two and the seven diminished seven of flat two. So here's how you could use this chart, and I encourage you to explore and play around with this and see if it's helpful. So let's take, for example, let's take example three. We're going to try a chromatic to 
a chromatic chromatic pivot chord modulation from D minor to E minor. Now let's think about the difference between those keys. D minor has one flat and E minor has one sharp. So the chords in D minor will have their equivalence in E minor two blocks to the right. That means two blocks to the flat side because as the key is moving to the sharp side, the chords within that key have to move to the flat side. If we want chromatic chords, we need to stay away from block five. We could start in block four and think of these as chords that are in D minor. As we go from a key with one flat to a key with no flats and then to a key with one sharp, we're going to be moving two clicks in this direction. And this is telling us that, for instance, the 5-7 of 5 chord in D minor could be the 5-7 of 4 chord in E minor. Of course, it'll be a lowercase 4, but that's the direction that we're going. We could also start someplace else. If we start, started in block 8, the chord which is 5-7 of flat 3 would turn into the chord that is 5-7 of flat 2 or the chord that is two diminished would turn into the chord which is seven diminished of flat two. So play around with this and see if it's helpful to you. And I'll be talking about this handout a little bit more in class and we'll be using it to try to come up with uh, good pivot chords for our modulations. Next, I'll be moving on to talk about the enharmonic reinterpretation of the German augmented sixth chord as a way of creating modulation.